Hi, I'm Dave and welcome to my investment channel. Today I want to talk about five things that all Tesla investors need to know for 2020. Now Tesla stock can be a very volatile stock and the company has a ton of news that's always going around and it's hard to interpret exactly what's going on. And I think for Tesla investors it's important to hold on to some objectivity and to know clearly what are the most important milestones that Tesla needs to achieve for 2020. Now the first item I want to address is the Gigafactory in Shanghai. As you already know, China is ramping up basically made in China Model 3s. They expect to basically start selling these Model 3s in December. They've already you know, started to manufacture them. But this um, ramp will take time. And Tesla's strategy is basically in the beginning, they're gonna be shipping, I guess, battery packs from Reno to China to basically help speed up the process. So China Gigafactory will basically focus on more of the body assembly, paint, etc. But over time, Tesla is needing to convert basically more and more of their sources to local sources. And that includes cell production and battery pack assembly. Basically, Tesla's 2020, I guess, goal is they want to reach basically 3,000 Model 3s per week. Times that by about 50 weeks is basically 150,000 Model 3s per year. Of course, they're hoping to get that earlier and some people are expecting it you know, by the end of 2019, but I've always cautioned people with Tesla's timelines. You've got to take it with a grain of salt. That's their objective hope to do so, but reality is there's a lot of things that get in the way. When you look at China's market, for Model 3s, it's humongous. And if you do the numbers, I basically, myself, I went through all the numbers of all the cars that Mercedes-Benz sells and compared it to how many cars they sell basically in China versus the US. And then take BMW, how many cars they sell in China versus the US. And then take Audi and Porsche, how many cars they sell in China versus the US. Across the board, all the luxury cars is basically double. They all sell two times the amount of cars in China than they do in the US. And I think that bodes well for, for Tesla. And it basically shows that Tesla's addressable market is actually two times as big in China than it is in the US. And so for 150,000 basically vehicle run rate or you know annual rate is, I don't think is overly ambitious. I think you know they could possibly go up to two, 300,000. Long term, it could be actually much more than that for just the Model 3. Now in Fremont, they're doing about 7,000 Model 3s a week. If you add the 3,000 extra that they're shooting for in, in Shanghai, basically that's 10,000 a week or 500,000 Model 3s. And I think actually that's a great production rate for 2020. And I think um, as Model Y comes in, we'll start to see you know more and more people maybe possibly choosing the Model Y, probably have to adjust some of the rate. But you know that just means China will have to start producing the Model Y as well, which I don't expect next year, It'll probably be the following year. So the second thing every Tesla investor needs to know for 2020 is regarding the Model Y ramp. The first cars are expected in summer, but Tesla has been ahead of schedule here and they are basically candidate cars, candidate Model Ys all around. And when we compare that to the Model 3 timeline, this really happened like less than about six months before actually first customer deliveries, they were basically driving around all these candidate cars for the Model 3. And so for Model Y, for them to be already driving around these candidate cars in October and November of this year, it kind of is a good sign that possibly Tesla can deliver the first cars possibly by the end of Q1 2020 or my bet is at least in Q2 of 2020. As they start to ramp Model Y production, I think you're gonna see a much smoother ramp than the experience with Model 3. And the big reason is because Model Y shares so many of the parts as Model 3. I mean, it's actually amazing. I've been in a, the Model Y a few times. It's almost indistinguishable to a Model 3. I mean, it really looks like a Model 3, like the dash, the seats, the window controls, the, you know, the screen, like, and I think uh, Tesla's doing a good job here. They're choosing to basically you know, make two versions of the same car basically. And because of that, the ramp is gonna be smoother than expected. I think we're gonna see, you know, by mid next year, we're gonna see these Model Ys more on the street. And by the end of next year, you're gonna see a lot of Model Ys and Tesla will be ramped up with Model Y production. The interesting thing about the Model Y is how much 
incremental income it's gonna be adding to Tesla's income statement. And this is exciting because already Tesla is covering their expenses with Model S, X, and 3 sales. And so by adding another line of cars in the Model Y, which supposedly is gonna cost the same as a Model 3, but just give much more basically gross, gross profit. All of the gross profit for the Model Y is gonna be basically passed through into net profit because they're already covering their operating expenses. And to ramp Model Y is not gonna increase their operating expenses much at all, if at all any, because the people they hire for Model Y production, those expenses go into the cost of goods, basically the cost to make a Model 3, which is in their gross profit, or is already factored in their gross profit. It doesn't go into their operating expenses. Um, so this is good news. Next year, uh, Model Y is the key for Tesla to become a massively profitable company. The third thing every Tesla investor should know in 2020 is Tesla's battery and drivetrain investor day. Now Tesla had a very successful um, autonomy investor day in 2019 earlier. Um, I had the chance to go and it was an excellent you know, venue, um, excellent time to meet the execs and to hear Tesla's vision for autonomy. Now for battery and drivetrain, Tesla is, has already spilled the beans, I think, where Tesla is gonna be announcing they're gonna be producing their own cells. I'm gonna share another video, more of a deep dive into why I think uh, Tesla is going to produce their own cells in 2020. But I think we're gonna have a big announcement. Tesla's gonna share exactly all their technologies with regarding cell production. They're gonna be giving these lofty goals of you know, millions and millions of cars. They're all needing basically, you know, the big bottleneck right now is battery production. And Tesla's gonna give a big pitch to show how much they've progressed and what this means for the future. And I believe after the battery investor day, uh, Tesla will do a cap raise, basically raise capital, sell equity or bonds to raise at least a few billion, if not more, uh, depending on the stock price, of course. Now, the fourth thing that every Tesla investor should know is Tesla's plans for autonomy. There are always news of like, you know, who's ahead and, and can Tesla really do robo taxis 2020 or not. And there's lots of controversy around um, autonomous driving, but here's my approach. And here's what I think every Tesla investor needs to think about. With Tesla's autonomy approach, it's such a solid incremental approach with so much data and so much just incremental iterative improvements that for Tesla, no news on the autonomy front is actually good news. Meaning if you don't hear too much about Tesla's autonomy, Tesla's robo taxis, all this stuff, then it actually means that Tesla is just plugging away and doing some great work in the background. And sooner or later, they're gonna get to full self-driving. What's interesting is everyone's caught up in the timeline of when is this gonna happen. I, I'm not too caught up because does it really matter if robo taxis are on the road in 2020 or 2021 or 2022? I don't think it's a big deal. But I think what's more important is how aggressively Tesla is pursuing the opportunity. Now I had a chance to basically you know, see a demo of the Tesla ride sharing app, which they showed just on the side to some people at the autonomy investor day earlier this year. Now it's quite interesting. It works just like an Uber app or a Lyft app and you basically you know, enter your, your location and you'll see you know, the cars basically available and the, the car that's coming to you in your app. And you'll see the car coming in, you know, just like a advanced summon, like come and pick you up. And I think what people aren't realizing with Tesla is they are thinking all this through, meaning you think for a ride sharing app, you could do that later. But Tesla has already have had multiple versions of this ride sharing app internally for their own purposes. They're iteratively and ruthlessly improving on the experience, improving on the whole ride sharing network concept on autonomous driving basically, and on, you know, ride sharing. And I think, um, it's gonna be a very, very interesting next year. My personal thought is I don't think we're gonna see robo taxis next year, at least what people expect it to be like. Um, we might have some, some very limited deployments, you know, where people have to like monitor it like very carefully, but I think that's okay. And I think um, Tesla just plugging away and being in the lead that they are is gonna be great for Tesla's future. The last thing and the fifth thing that every Tesla investor should know for 2020 is the semis are gonna be for internal Tesla uses. Um, so basically, I, my guess is, you know, transporting battery packs from, you know, Reno to Fremont, back and forth, et cetera. And I think that's probably gonna take the majority, if not all of the production in 2020. I don't think that you're gonna see a ton of production in 2020 of the semi. But 
I think the Semi is actually like an amazing product. Uh, at the autonomy day, I was talking with Jerome Guillen, and he was just sharing how a lot of the business customers are very excited about Tesla Semi because of the numbers. You know, it just works out on their spreadsheets, and it's such an easy sell because you know the economics are in the favor of Tesla Semi. In terms of how big a business uh, Tesla Semi can be, um, I think actually it could be quite big. I don't think right now, you know, Tesla has a ton of competitors to be scared about because a large part of the Tesla Semi is the battery and drivetrain, right? And the autonomous systems. And Tesla is already developing those. And because of that, they have that advantage. At the autonomy day, actually, also I was talking to an engineer who was working on the Tesla Semi, and he was basically saying that it's interesting because for the Semi, you don't have to have as many safety, I guess, um, requirements as passenger cars. And because of that, actually, to build a Tesla Semi is actually not as complicated as one would think. And so it really is like, you know, a drivetrain, a huge battery, you know, um, and some other stuff, of course, and autonomous driving that's basically powering this Tesla Semi. And Tesla is basically in a fantastic position because they're leveraging the other parts, basically, of their business. For the solar roof, they're on version three and Elon thinks that they've got a great product. They're gonna be scaling that. Uh, my big concern is like the cleaning and the maintenance and it just, a roof is a very like intricate and very fragile and very complicated product in terms of, you know, of a house. Yeah, I think it's possible the Tesla roof can be a big thing. I lean toward being skeptical in terms of the speed of the rollout. I think as they get iteratively better, the solar roof, I think demand will increase and we'll see if 2020 is gonna be, you know, the year where the, there's a breakout in the solar roof. For 2020, I've also made a video about why I think Tesla is gonna be joining the S&P 500, so check out that video. I've also made a video on why um, I think Tesla is gonna start battery cell production in 2020, and a few other videos about the Cybertruck and Tesla shorts. So check out those videos. I think 2020 is gonna be an amazing year for Tesla. If Tesla successfully ramps Model Y, yeah, to basically, to the amounts of existing Model 3 demand. So basically, if they can get up to seven to 10,000 Model Ys by the end of the year in 2020, I think it's gonna be an amazing, successful year for Tesla. And we're gonna to start to see it um, with amazing profits um, for Tesla as well. And so this is gonna be a, a possibly a great year for all Tesla investors. All right, see you guys later. Hit subscribe and uh, reply with a comment. See you, bye.